How are we doing? Yeah, good. Sweater weather. Sir? Sweater weather. Sweater weather, yeah. yeah boy. We're in there fired up, man. We got a, we got a big challenge. Last time we were in the ACC championship game, we were in the rain. You know, how do y'all prepare for weather, I guess? Anytime that the forecast is calling for rain throughout the course of the week, uh, we'll, we'll be very intentional uh, in getting prepared, uh, have different segments of practice where we'll practice, we'll practice with some wet balls, uh, just try to simulate and recreate the environments as much as possible. Uh, I think we talked about it earlier uh, today, and hopefully it's not calling for any rain. Uh, we know that this game's always been pretty cold. Uh, it's, it's pretty chilly up there in Charlotte this time of year, but we're hoping there's no rain. But if it is, you know, it doesn't matter. Part of our mindset here at Clemson is, you know, it doesn't matter who we play, where we play, what the weather is. You know, it's all about how we play. We try to block out as many of the uh, external factors as we can. Tony, on Saturday, you guys, like you had made a couple changes in alignment, spot wide receiver-wise, moving some of the, your bigger guys into the slot. You know, is that something designed just for this game or is it something you guys are find moving forward? Well, Especially when you have two weeks uh, and it's, it's a huge game and, and this is the type of game where you're preparing for this game pretty much all year long. You know, not maybe not directly, but indirectly you're preparing for, for that rivalry game. And we had, a, we had two, two weeks to prepare. So just want to try to break any tendencies that we can. And uh, especially when, you, when you're trying to go into the championship phase, uh, it's not about the plays this time of year. It's about the players, uh, just getting them in a position to be successful. And uh, had a lot of success uh, last year uh, during this time of year, moving some guys around. and. Uh, you know, Justin was comfortable uh, with, with what we put on his plate, handled it well, and uh, we'll just continue to find ways to try and create matchups because, uh, again, when you're talking about championship football, uh, the, the teams are going to be pretty much even. Uh, so you, any kind of schematic advantage you can get uh, by personnel matchups, we're going to try, but at the end of the day, just put players in position and let them go make plays. You know, they just they, they were pretty consistent in how they played it, um, and, and we felt like uh, we just felt good about the percentages of what they did versus that that uh, that particular alignment uh, that allowed us with a little bit of extra time to kind of change a couple things and, and maybe show them something that they thought they'd seen before, but actually it's, it's it's something a little bit different. I think it worked out to our advantage. You said Justin was confident with what you saw in his plays. Well, just to, anytime you're moving a guy around, um, you, you're not just going to have one play. You're going to have you know multiple plays uh, within that package. Uh, so he just did a good job of just absorbing everything. And we've moved him around a little bit throughout the course of the season. But especially when you start talking about the bunch sets and, and different personnel groupings, uh, that's a little bit different for guys. What is it about Justin where you see he did it last year too? He had the big game Saturday. He seems to play his best football at the end of the season. And maybe how much of that is because you guys seem to really pare down the reps as far as getting your your big time guys out there in these final few. You know, I think that at first he's just a, he's just a confident guy, and, and he lives for the moment. You know, it's 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 that's what's impressive about a lot of these guys. The bigger the stage is, the better they play, uh, and he's just uh, built from that that kind of material. Uh, the bigger the stage is, the better he's going to play. And uh, and again, at, at this time of year, it's all hands on deck, and and the guys have really bought in. The biggest thing is, you know, plays only work when players believe, uh, and all these guys, just in particular, they believe in, in what we're doing. Uh, they accept the challenge of of of. Things look being a little bit new, but they understand why we're doing it. Uh, we're not just doing it for the sake of, of Jeff and myself and the offensive staff to try and take credit. We're trying to do it to put them in position to be successful. And so when the guys believe, uh, they go out and they work hard and they're able to uh, put, in the, put in the work to get the details down. And that's the biggest thing. And uh, he was able to get the details down, and it worked out and happened for him. What does it kind of say about his mentality, his, his, his team-first approach, that everybody seemed like he was primed to come in and put up these massive numbers. And just because of the way you guys go about your business, is that very – you know, modest statistics this year. Maybe didn't have to break out year a lot of ways. That, that's what's great about uh, all the young men in our program. You know, coming in the door, they understand that there's no entitlement. Everything's going to be earned. Uh, and if you pay the price, then, then ultimately the rewards will take care of themselves down the road. Uh, and that's just the kind of young man he is. That's how all these guys are. Uh, even early in the season with Travis. You know, Travis was, even though things might not have statistically been going the way he wanted them to go, he was still playing hard. He was still doing the little things that he needed to do without the ball. And that's just all of our guys. And that's what's so impressive about this group, especially this group offensively, is just how unselfish these guys are. And, and they understand that they're all, they're all pulling in the same direction. They all want the same thing. Uh, and they understand in order for us to be able to accomplish the things as a team, then individually you got to sacrifice a little bit. Uh, but if you're willing to sacrifice, Ultimately, you're going to be rewarded because when the team wins, everybody wins. Right. 
You know, Virginia is first and foremost very well coached, very disciplined uh, football team. Uh, very with the with the versatility of their outside linebackers, um, they have the ability to be very multiple, uh, so they can create some some problems just from identification standpoint schematically. Uh, schematically, they, they they present problems, and then the players you can tell they, they believe in what they're doing, and and they're very well coordinated. They understand the details. They're very smart, uh, which allows them to to play fast, but then also take advantage of of mistakes offensively because you you got got, got so much to get ready for, uh, and it's very very difficult when you can jump in and out of structure with the same personnel grouping, which doesn't give the offense a tip that hey they're getting ready to change their structure. They can go from play to play with a different structure. Uh, and then again, especially in a run game, that causes you, you know, problems just with how you're blocking things because things change when alignments of def uh, defensive linemen change. And then because of that uh, and, and the, the athleticism that they have uh, with their outside linebackers, uh, they can create problems. And, and, and then that also now frees up the blitzers inside uh, because you're so worried about those edge rushers that they got. So it's really just they're very well coordinated. They're, they're, they're playing with, with unbelievable passion because they believe in what they're doing. Uh, and then the ability with their intelligence to change structure allows them to create some problems. Coach, talk about Trevor and his running on Saturday and what you can expect from him this Saturday. I mean, he, he, he showed out. No doubt. He, he's just, with every, every game that goes by, he just continues to be more and more confident, you know, running the football. Um, very, very tough. Um, and so that, that allows us, and really the third down uh, conversion percentage that we had on, on Thursday was a direct reflection of him just extending some plays. Uh, you know, they were going to take some chances and play us with some two-man uh, situations that they don't account for the quarterback, and he was able to recognize that, didn't force the balls, made good decisions, pulled it down, and was able to run. And, and I've said this before, and, you know, hopefully people are taking notice that I mean, he's a good athlete. <laughs> he's a really good athlete. Uh, he runs, and we actually kind of had a debate in there uh, after this game. Said, so, you know what, he might be faster than Deshaun was, uh, to be honest with you. But now he's becoming more and more confident running the football, uh, better understanding how to protect himself, uh, which which leads to that confidence for him to be able to pull it down. And then he's just been playing at a, a very high level in terms of decision making. You know, he understands. Uh, he corrected the mistakes early on of maybe trying to force some things, and now he says, you know what, I got the ability to get out of things with my legs. Let's not force the ball down the field. You know, if the defense is going to take it away, then I'm just going to pull the ball down and run uh, and, and move the chains. And that's hard to say because uh, his deep ball's been good since the day since the day he showed up. But uh, but right now uh, it looks like the the guys are are all on the same page. You know, I think with the exception of that first play, if he if he had that one back, he probably put it out there a little bit more. T had two hands on it, a uh, very contested play, uh, could could have came down with it. Uh, but right now, you know, those guys are on the same page, and and so what he's been able to do, which is is just a testament to the kind of of a player that he is, he's able to understand his personnel. You know, it's very, very difficult to throw that deep ball when you got a lot of different guys that you're throwing to, and each one of them has their strengths and their weaknesses. Each one is a different speed. Uh, so he has the ability to just anticipate based off his personnel, uh, and his guys are, have given him the confidence by making the plays too. Uh, so he's put the ball where it needs to be, but the guys have gone up and made the plays, uh, which you know really increases their confidence and overall the, co the quarterback's confidence. The, the, same, the same thing that, that I say every year, um, Coach Sweeney, these players, the staff, man, they've been too good for me, been too good to me over the years for me to be distracted this time of year. Uh, I understand that, that that comes with the territory, but my focus is on being my best for these players. I mean, we got a chance to, to do something special. And I told the guys before, before we went out uh, over South Carolina that, you know, this is, I kind of compared it to the Roman Empire. You know, and, and my favorite movie is Gladiator. You know, these guys have a chance to, to do something in life that will echo in eternity. And selfishly, I'm not going to take away from that. And, and there will be a time. Uh, and, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm led by the Spirit. And, and if at some time, you know, the, the Lord opens the door and says, this is the one I want you to walk through, then he'll present that. But, but right now, I'm just staying focused on being here, being present in the moment, uh, because I owe it to these players. I owe it to Coach Sweeney. I owe it to that offensive staff to be at my best. And if that time, you know, presents itself in the future, then I'll consider it. You guys have already had one of the great runs uh, in recent college memory. Winning back-to-back -back college championships with Cement, that, that's an all-time next level thing. Does that ever come up in practices at all, or is it just kind of an, un, an unspoken thing that nobody You know, that's a, that's an unspoken thing amongst, you know, the, the, the coaches and, and the players. Uh, obviously, Coach Sweeney is, 
uh, and that's what I admire about him the most, man. He's a man of vision. You know, he sees things before they happen, and he's able to to paint that big picture vision. And so, yes, he, he's talked about it with the team, you know, just a little bit to say this is what's possible. But he quickly reminds them that in order for that to even happen, you've got to focus on being great today. And so, so when we come out here uh, for practice today, we're going to be focused on having the best uh, mental Monday of the year because we got an opportunity to. Before you can do all of that, you got to take care of another goal on our board, which is to win. You know, to win the ACC title. So we understand what's potentially out there, but we're not focused on that because if we focus on that, then we're not going to take care of what's in front of us. And if we don't take care of what's in front of us, there's no opportunity for, uh, for that. Yeah, it was. It, that's probably the the only thing that really disappointed about uh, the game was was not being able to punch it in. And the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to throw the offensive line under the bus and say it was their fault. And, and to be honest with you, you know Travis had an opportunity. You know they 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 blocked it well enough. And down there, you're talking about early in the game. Uh, their their strength is their defensive line, and you put them in a position where they're able to get extra you know big bodies on the field. Uh, our guys did a good job, and and then Travis just. You know, it was a little bit impatient on a couple, uh, tried to do a little bit too much. Uh, and then there were a couple where, you know, if he just gets his pads down a little bit lower, he's going to be able to knife through there and score. So it was just a combination of, you know, I think it's an anomaly. Travis will learn from it. Uh, but normally in those situations, the, the Travis, you know, does what he needs to do. He just didn't quite have, at that moment, he didn't quite have his A game. But, uh, but that's something for me to challenge him going forward. And he'll look at it, and he'll accept it, he'll own it, and, uh, and we'll move forward. How do you I think with Travis, um, he's he's truly embraced, you know, who he is, what gifts he has, and what the responsibility of those, of those gifts are. Uh, I think going into the season, uh, he didn't he didn't necessarily want to accept the responsibility of being the true leader in the room because prior to. Uh, you know, Taven leaving, he wasn't going to be the guy. Taven was going to be the senior, the natural leader in the room. So that kind of forced him into that role. And he was just trying to figure it out. I mean, he was trying to figure it out. It's, it's kind of, well, what do I say? When do I say it? What do I say? How do I do it? And then now it's just coming natural to him. He's embraced it. He's embraced his role. And he understands that if he wants to accomplish the things that he's capable of accomplishing, then he has to have the right mindset every single day. And he's got to have that attention to detail and that focus. And, and, and he really has to have that, that, that pro mindset, so to speak. Not that he's thinking about you know, being a pro, but if you talk about the best of the best, you know, they're, they're that before they become the best. You know? So he has that mindset. So I think he just has a, you know, a much more disciplined, much more focused, much more structured uh, mindset. And I think he's done a really good job of blocking out the noise uh, and all the distractions around him and just got back to playing because he loves it and embracing his opportunity to be with these guys and really, really, you know, kind of, kind of cement his legacy from a leadership standpoint, not just from a statistical standpoint. Has Wednesday progressed about as well as you could You know, there's still some areas I thought that that there was some plays, you know, in the game uh, that you saw, and it's just little things. You know, one was a little kind of little toss play, uh, wasn't a whole lot there. Man, he dropped his pads, and that's something that I've been challenging him to do. Uh, then there were a couple other ones uh, where I'd want him to have that same mindset. So he's still a young guy, but I think he's headed in the right direction. Uh, feel really confident with him in the game at any point in time uh, because he's been able to truly understand what we're doing in all situations. Uh, that's why you're seeing him play a lot more early uh, in the game, uh, and there's no hesitation if Travis needs a blow uh, to send Lin, Lin Jay in there and let him play. He just has to continue to work on being consistent. And over the last several games, you've seen a lot more consistency out of him. So I think he's maturing you know, at the right pace, uh, but still opportunities for him to grow. Uh, and the good thing about, about Lin Jay, uh, I know he gets a lot of recognition for his dancing and, and you know, having that, that personality, but I've just seen a different, different focus and demeanor about him you know, over the last probably about four or five weeks. Thank you, Coach. Thank All you, right. Tony. All right.